Hello everyone, welcome back to Christian's Corner and welcome back to Doki Doki Literature Club, the horror game that pretends to be something else. So, so far, we haven't seen the horror aspect, however we know it's coming and I'm bracing myself and if you have watched the previous two episodes, you will be aware that I've already started to pick up on a few things which point at this young lady here potentially being the centre of something bad that's going to happen. Now, I have to warn you on every single episode simply because the game has a warning on it. If you are not over the age of 13, if you are suffering with any kind of uh, depressive, depressive disorder or anxiety disorder or any other kind of negative disorder that might uh, create a bad experience when watching a messed up horror game that pretends to be something nice, you should probably not watch this. Viewer discretion is advised. If you choose to watch it, I'm not responsible. Right, okay. Now, let's find out where were we. Where were we? Oh yes, we were going on about... We were taking... We were, we were getting weird with Sayori about her appearance and making her feel bad. Which is something that we should always do. And you don't even keep your blazer buttoned up, you naughty girl. Seriously, Sayori. Why do you think you don't have a boyfriend yet? That was a mean thing to say. I wouldn't say that to somebody, but apparently my character would. Eh? That's super mean. Yeah, it is super mean. Deal with it. Deal with my super meanness. Sorry, but you'll thank me later. I don't, I don't think she will. I think she's probably going to turn into a crazy person and hack us to pieces or something, based on the reputation this game has. I start to button her blazer from the bottom. Why? Why would you do that? Once you see how much better it looks, you'll change your mind, my character says. Oh god, why, why? And why is she laughing as well? Weird. This is so funny. What is? Well, I was just thinking how weird it is to have a friend that does these kinds of things. Well, I'm, I'm not a friend really, am I? I'm more of an acquaintance from your past. I think we'll leave it there because that's better than... I don't, I'm not sure that friendship is really something that I would have with this girl or any, any kind of relationship, to be honest with you. I was just thinking, yeah, uh, don't say that. You'll make me feel weird about it, stupid. It's okay, though. I'm happy we're like this. I'm not. Sayori, aren't you? No! Oh, my character says, I guess my character's contradicting me. Button oh, might come off. Why is this one so hard to close? I struggle to fully close the button. Does this thing even fit you properly? I always say to her. She laughs, apparently. It did when I bought it. Sigh. Oh, this is me again now. If you ever buttoned it, you would have noticed sooner that it doesn't fit anymore. What are you smiling about? She's going to say something bad, isn't she? It means my beep beeps got bigger. Mm. Don't say that out loud, I say. I say to you, do not say that out loud. It's weird and stuff. Say, oi. Ha ha. Me. Anyway, you look better now. Uh... Why does it feel strange to see Sayori's blazer buttoned up like that? Probably because she never has it buttoned up like that until we came along and made her button it up like that. That's probably a good explanation for that, isn't it? Why am I getting invested in this? But it's so stuffy, she says. It's not worth it at all. She hastily unbuttons it again. So now she's back to looking like a silly person. Phew! That's so much better. Sayori puts her arms out and twirls around. That's a bit of a weird response to have, I, I must say. I'm not sure most normal people would have that response to that situation of unbuttoning their, their, the top of their blazer because it's too tight. That's a bit of a weird thing to do. Sayori, so if I keep it unbuttoned then I won't get a boyfriend, right? That's a bit of a weird thing to say. Me. What kind of logic is that? I think I'm on the same wavelength as my character now. And why are you saying that like it's a good thing? Sayori, because... If I had a boyfriend, then he wouldn't even let you do things like this. What makes you think I would give a shit? Just saying. And you take care of me better than anyone else anyway. So that's why I'm keeping it out buttoned. Really, really stupid logic. It doesn't make sense at all. 
I think she's trying to do something, but it's not working because she's a very silly person. Stop saying all of these embarrassing things, my character says, and rightly so. So you A. Hey, I didn't say anything embarrassing. Well, anyway, Sayori, just, just focus on trying to wake up a little earlier. That's the discussion that we were originally having before all of this weirdness started. You are oversleeping, which is related to my theory about her depression, which you will remember from the previous episode. Sayori, only if you focus on going to bed earlier. I don't have to do that. I'm not going to either. Ha ha! Ha ha! Whatever. What? It's a deal, I suppose. It's not like you're going to be watching me to know that I'm not going to bed earlier, is it? Or will she? <laughs> Sayori, I guess we really are better at taking care of each other than we are at taking care of ourselves. Right, well, that's not a good thing. Go away. Be gone, woman. Be gone, strange Japanese girl. Japanese anime girl, I meant to say. Not very awake right now been tired most of the day. It's been one of those days. Yeah, I guess so. Sayori, so maybe you should come wake me up in the morning. I don't think I should do that. That's weird. Chris, you're doing it again, Sayori. Sayori, oh, but I was joking that time. Yeah, sure you were. Sure you were. I need 900 milligrams of nicotine to get through a conversation with this girl. Man, it's important to tell with... Important. It's important. <laughs> it's impossible to tell with you sometimes, Monica. Okay, everyone. Uh, Monica suddenly calls out in a very peculiar way. Why don't we share the poems we wrote now? Yay! Chris, I can't wait to read yours. So he always says, "I can. I can wait. I can wait. I can wait. I can wait." I fail to sound enthusiastic because I'm not. <laughs> But Sayori still trots away to retrieve her poem anyway. Not that I could stop her because she's a crazy little bubble of air balls. Monica, by the way, did you remember to write one? Yes, I did that thing with the little, little chippy creatures bobbing up and down when I was missing words and I noticed that you weren't present, Monica. So, so far, I've got two suspicions, okay? The first is that while all the other characters seem to be pretty consistent to their traits at this current stage, at this current stage, Sayori is showing a lot of signs, especially in the poem thing that we did, Sayori is showing lots of signs of depression and anxiety and emotional instability. Monica wasn't even present, so that was also something I highlighted as odd. So that's two characters that have caught my interest as being a bit strange and possibly not quite normal in the rest of the game. We'll see how that goes, but I'm, I'm detecting that Monica and Sayori are both going to be an issue at some point. Um, I haven't got enough evidence on the others yet to decide what I think of them. Monica, but yeah, I did do that. Chris, yeah. My relaxation ends immediately, and it should too, because it's weird. I can't believe I agreed to do something this embarrassing. I couldn't really find much inspiration since I've never really done this before. Monica, well, now that everyone's ready, why don't you find someone to share with? By the way, this episode's going to be slightly longer because I've had feedback. I've had feedback that my Doki Doki, even though I said, even though I said I was going to keep them short because of the amount of data to digest between episodes, um, I had feedback from 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 several people that the episodes weren't long enough. So I'm going to lengthen them a little bit, a little bit. But I'm going to be cautious about how much I lengthen it because there will be a lot to digest, especially later. <laughs> Sayori, I can't wait! Sayori and Monica enthusiastically pull out their poems. If you can't tell, I'm still recovering from this damn virus. My chest is not happy, so if I cough, please excuse me. I've also got a bit of a headache. Sayori is on a wrinkle... Hang on, am I reading that right? That sounds weird. Sayori's... Oh, I see. Say, <laughs> I misread it. Sayori's is on a recalled sheet of loose leaf, torn from a spiral notebook. I thought that I said something else for a moment, and I was a bit concerned. 
On the other hand, Monica wrote hers in a composition notebook. Well, that's, that's very classy, isn't it? Very classy indeed. I can already see Monica's pristine handwriting from where I sit. Nazuki and Yui reluctantly comply as well, reaching into their bags. I do the same. Oh, 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 oh. oh, I see. So we have to choose which one we're going to talk to first. Shall we just start at the top? I think that'll be easier. Sayori. I'm definitely most comfortable sharing it with Sayori first. I'm not, but there you go. My character is, though. She's my good friend, after all. That crazy person that's probably going to do bad things to me later. <laughs> you did the thing with your face. I don't like it when you do the thing with your face. Don't do that with your face. Oh my goodness! This is so good! Um, okay. So you're I love it so much! Oh, you have no idea how much I love it. Sayori, I had no idea you were such a good writer. I'm not. I am a, 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 a person that pressed some words on a book with little chibi creatures bobbing up and down next to it. That's not really what I would call good writing. But there you go. We're implying that it was good writing. I, I understand. Chris, Sayori, you must be seriously overreacting. I think she probably is, actually. I'm not a good writer at all. I honestly have no idea what I'm doing, Sayori. Well, maybe that's why. Because I have no idea what I like either. Ha ha ha. I think she's a bit of a bit of an odd one, this one, isn't she? Yes, she is. Chris, jeez. I'm sure Yuri's opinion has to be a little more constructive than this. Maybe even Azuki's. Me. Are you sure you don't like it just because I wrote it? Eh? Hey. Well, I'm sure that's part of it. I think I understand you better than a lot of other people, you know? Do you? Are you sure about that? Are you sure about that? Because I am into the darker side of the world, I'll have you know, Sayori. I'm not a butterfly, sunshine woman, man, person like you. No, I'm not. So when I read your poem, it's not just a poem, it's a crisp poem. Oh God, you sound like my partner. You sound like this one here. She talks like that. She talks like that. Sayori, that makes it feel extra special. Stop imitating her. Stop it. Stop it, it's weird. You're breaking the ninth wall or whatever. Sayori, like I can feel your feelings in it. Sayori hugs the sheet against her chest. That's just... Yeah, I was just... I was literally just about to say that's so weird, and then my character just went, you're weird, and say, <laughs> Say, oi. Ha ah, ha! I'm really happy you wrote one. It just reminds me of how you are really past the club now, am I? Not to mention the fact that I'm standing in front of you in the club room. Yes, because that wouldn't be a giveaway at all, would it? No, it wouldn't. Oh. Chris, uh, well, of course... I'm not really into it yet, but that doesn't mean I won't uh, mean I'll break my my promise and all that stuff. So you know, see, it's like I said before, Chris. Deep down, you're not selfish at all. Ah. So you know, trying new things like this for other people—that's something only really good people do. Actually, that's something that pushovers do: doing things because other people tell them to. Take a stand in life. Don't do things because people make you even though my character is doing exactly that. Thanks, Sayori. Now go away. Go on. And again. I can't deny that she's part of the reason I joined. Just, just, just on. be gone with you, woman. You are peculiar. Off you go. Knowing how much this means to her and all. Go on. And I'm going to make sure you have lots of fun. Just go. Just go. That will be my way of thanking you. Just, just, just get, him, get away. Go on. All right. I'm going to hold you to that then. Yay. Now you'll read my poem to... Oh, I forgot I had to read hers. <laughs> I forgot I had to read hers as well. That's going to be fun, isn't it? Don't worry, it's re... I'm really bad at this. Ha ha. Me. We'll see about that. Oh God, it is bad. Dear Sunshine, the way you glow through my blinds in the morning 
It makes me feel like you missed me. You know, I'm not really a sunlight person, so that's not not very helpful for me. Kissing my forehead to help me out of bed, making me rub the sleepy from my eyes. Oh, God. Now she's trying to sound all cutesy. She's doing a bad job at it, though. Are you asking me to come out and play? Are you trusting me to wish away a rainy day? I look above, the sky is blue. It's a secret, but I trust you too. What's the secret? What's the secret? I feel like I've missed a reference there. What reference? What re What reference did I miss? Let me read the rest of it, and then we'll see. Um, it's a secret, but I trust you too. If it wasn't for you, I could sleep forever. But I'm not mad. I want breakfast. What? That's just like the most random ending ever. But what's the secret that she was talking about? It makes me feel. I don't know. I feel like I've missed a reference. But I can't see it. Whatever it is. There's a secret in there somewhere and I haven't decrypted it. Chris, Sayori, <coughs> this is just a guess, but did you wait until this morning to write this? Sayori, no! Just a little bit. Me. You can't answer just a little bit to a yes or no question. Again, sounds like a certain person behind me. <laughs> she does that. Yes, yes she does. You can't answer just a little bit to a yes or no question. I forgot to do it last night, she said. Sounds like her as well. Chris, well at least... Yes, you're getting the, you're getting the brunt of my, my meanness today. You're getting the brunt of my meanness today. You're not organised. A bit organised sometimes. <laughs> Chris, well, at least that makes me feel a little better about myself. Sayori, don't be mean. I love being mean. Don't you love being mean? Being mean. Being mean is like the best thing in the world, isn't it? When it's not meant in a really nasty way, but it's kind of meant in a teasy way. Sayori, don't be mean. I still tried my best. Chris. Ah, yeah, I didn't mean to say it was a bad poem. It came out nice, or how should I put it? It sounds like you. Sayori. Really? Me. Yeah. Especially that last line, because you're always bloody hungry. Sayori. I made eggs and toast. That's nice. I didn't need to know that, but that's nice. Chris. Even though you were late to school. Sayori. It's bad to skip breakfast. I get all cranky. Me. Well, I guess there's no point in arguing. Anyway, thanks for showing me. Sayori does that weird laugh thing again. Sayori, this was so much fun. Monica's the best. Yeah. But next time I won't forget. And I'm going to write the best poem ever in existence. Rah. Chris, well, I guess I look forward to it. Now, shove off. Right. I don't know. Oh, God, Natsuki, she's the bratty one that I don't like, isn't she? I mean, I don't like any of them much, but this one is the one I dislike the most. Dot, dot, dot. That's her, that's her, that's her, that's her response. And I'm just sitting here like, what? Nazuki. Well, it's about what I expected from someone like you. I, I think you're a duck. Because every time I do your... Every time I make a voice that kind of reflects your personality, you just end up sounding like a duck. So I think you're a duck. Chris, that's a little blunt. Nazuki. Well, excuse me. It's not like I said it was bad. It just didn't evoke any emotions. What you mean is it didn't evoke any emotions for you, specifically. That's called your perspective. Quit me. So basically, it's not cute enough for your tastes. Sounds about right. Nasuki, do you want to get smacked? Yeah, I'd probably pass on that. I think I'll pass on that because if you do that, I'll have to revisit the idea of chucking you out the window like a rag doll. She sighs at me. Well, anyway, I guess I need to show you mine. Not that you'll like it. Oh, God. Oh, God. This is a really weird one, isn't it? Eagles can fly. Monkeys can climb. Crickets can leap. Horses can race. Owls can seek. 
Cheetahs can run. Eagles can fly. You said that already. People can try. But that's about it. Okay, I'm just going to say, from my knowledge of literature in real life, that kind of feels like it's been deliberately set up for a fall at the bottom. Like it falls flat deliberately. Let's see what she says. Yeah! Told you that you weren't going to like it. I didn't say I didn't like it. What? Just be honest. I am. Didn't say I didn't like it. Why are you so convinced that I wouldn't like it? Is it because you're a silly person? Excuse me, my partner's coughing. Are you okay? You alright? I was just making sure she wasn't dying. <laughs> Why are you so convinced that I wouldn't like it? Well, because... Everyone in high school thinks that writing has to be all sophisticated and stuff. So people don't even take my writing seriously. But it isn't the, but isn't the point of poems for people to express themselves. Oh, that's me talking now. Why am I sounding like her? Your writing style wouldn't make your message any less valid, would it? Yes, exactly. I like it when it's easy to read, but it hits you hard. Like it in this one. Seeing everyone around you do great things could be really disheartening. So I decided to write about it. Yeah, I understand. But the other nice thing is about how about simple writing is that it puts more weight on the wordplay. Like I set it up for a rhyme at the end, but then made it fall flat on purpose. I said that. See, I know what I'm talking about, don't I? Yeah, I know what I'm talking about. You think Skyrim and Vampire Games is all I know? Well, you'd be wrong. Yeah. Right. Let's move on. It helps bring out the feeling in the last line. So you did. I guess more went into that than I realised, even though I did realise. Mizuki, that's what it means to be a pro! I'm glad you learned something. I, th I just can't stop seeing her as a duck now, for some reason. Even, look, uh, it's like... The, the duck beak should be there. That, that, that shouldn't be a mouth, that should be... A mouth. Anyway, didn't expect that from the youngest one here, did you? Chris, yeah, I guess not. I decided to humour her with that last comment. Now she can she can go and step away to some other place. I don't care. I don't really care how old everyone is. If Mitsuki is feeling proud, then I won't take that away from her. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh god. Next up is Yuri. Yuri is Um probably gonna write something. How do I put this? She's got a kind of a gothic vibe, so I've got a feeling that it will take on a a more macabre nature, her, whatever she's written. So we'll see. Just so you know, all of you out there, i got nothing against goths. I actually quite like them. I have spent time with many a goth in my time. Stop laughing, you. She's laughing at me, she is. It's true, though. I spend a lot of time with the alternative community. I'm not exactly normal myself. You may have fucking noticed. Right, Yuri. Yuri. Hmm. Yuri stares at the poem. A minute passes, more than enough time for her to finish her reading. Um. Oh. Sorry. I forgot to start speaking. You're one of them, aren't you? You're one of them that doesn't speak when they want to, when they want to speak. They want to speak, but they forget to speak. And then she does that as well. She does that. She'll sit there and then she'll start talking about something, and I'll have no idea what she's on about. And then she goes, "Oh, I forgot to mention this this first bit of what I was saying." This is the house I live in. But she's only one. There's another one out there. He's arguably worse in some ways. <laughs> Yuri, um, Chris, it's it's fine. Don't force yourself, Yuri. I'm not. I just need to put my thoughts into words. Oh, hold on. Okay, 
This is your first time writing a poem, right? Yeah. Why do you ask? I'm just making sure. I guess that it might be after reading it through it. Ah, so it's that bad, is it? <clears throat> no! Did I just raise my voice? I'm sorry. Yuri Bluff buries her face in her hands, which is a perfectly ordinary response. I couldn't help but notice that it's been several minutes and we haven't really gotten anywhere. It might take Yuri a while to get used to new people, I don't know, maybe. Chris, it's fine, I really didn't notice. What were you saying? Yuri, right, um... It's just that there were specific writing habits that are usually typical of new writers. And having been through that myself, I kind of learned to pick up on them. I think the most noticeable thing I recognise in new writers is that they try to make their style very deliberate. In other words, they tend to pick a writing style separate from the topic matter, and they try to form-fit the two together. The end result is, they, is, is that both the style and the expressiveness are weakened. Okay. Once Yuri finds her train of thought, it's as if her demeanour totally changes. Her stammering is completely gone, and she sounds like an expert. Yuri... Of course, that's not something you can be blamed for. There's so many different kinds, different skills and techniques that go into writing or even a simple poem. Not just finding them and building them, but getting them to work together is probably the most challenging part. It might take you some time, but it all comes with practice and learning by example and trying new things. And you're not supposed to put that many ands in one sentence. It's bad grammar. Yuri, I also hope that everyone else in the club gives you valuable feedback. Azuki can be a little biased, though. Biased how, I say. Um, well, never mind. I shouldn't be talking about people like that. Well, don't do it, then. Yuri, sorry. Chris, it's fine. I'm not sure if Yuri is apologising to herself, to me or to Azuki. Do you mind if I read your poem now, I say to her? Please do. So, as I said, I've, I've got a, a general idea of the, of the kind of style that hers is going to be in. I'd love to share my thought process behind it. <clears throat> Yui smiles dreamily as if it's a rare opportunity for her. Which itself is kind of funny, apparently. I don't know why that would be funny, but there you go. After all, isn't this supposed to be a literature club? Right, let's see how I interpret it before we look at how my character interprets it. Ghost under the light. The tendrils of my hair illuminate beneath the amber glow. Bathing. It must be this one, the last remaining streetlight to have withstood the test of time, the last to get replaced by the sickening blue-green hue of the future. I bathe, calm, breathing, air of the present but living in the past. The light flickers. I flicker back. So, it's called Ghost Under the Light, but I don't think it's talking about a literal ghost. The impression I get is it's more a kind of, like, ghost of the past impression, like, um... Like, the, the, the look of the past, the past look of the scene slowly being over... Uh, slowly dying away and being overtaken by more modern appearance. Let's see how I did with that, shall we? I'm sorry I have such terrible handwriting. Yes, your, your writing is a bit hard to read, to be fair. Well, I wasn't thinking that at all. I was. I totally was thinking that. Yuri, but it took a long time for you to read. Ah, well, I just don't read script very often. I actually think your handwriting is pretty. I don't. Yuri, oh, uh, that's a relief. Also, I liked the poem. That's me now. Also, I like the poem. Even though it's short, it was really descriptive. Yui, it wasn't too short. I usually write longer ones. No, it was fine. I'm really glad you like it. I'll be honest. Since it's our first time sharing, I want I wanted to write something a little more mild. Something easy to digest, I suppose. Are you into ghosts, Yuri? Now, I've got a feeling that Yuri's response to that is going to be a corrective one about how the poem is not about ghosts, which I've already said I believe to be true. So let's see. 
Uh-huh. Actually, the story isn't about a ghost at all. See? Told you. <laughs> really? I must have totally missed the point. Well, I didn't. Yuri. Well, I suppose you did give... Did only glance over it, after all. But remember that poets oft often express their own thoughts, feelings and experiences in their work. They usually do more than tell a simple story or paint a picture. In this case, perhaps the subject of the poem is only being symbolically compared to a ghost. See? That's what I said. Lingering in her last remaining place of comfort, unable to let go of the past. And soon to be left with nothing. Chris, that's a lot more solemn, a lot more solemn way of putting it. I hadn't even thought of that. I had. That's impressive. Yuri, it's nothing. Well, well, it makes me happy to that you like that you think that. Just remember that it won't be long before you pick up on these things too. Chris, yeah, maybe you're right. I guess I'll have to keep trying. Yuri, I'm counting on you. Don't count on me. It's weird. Like. Imagine if someone actually like put a stack of coins on you and then just starts counting the coins while they're on you and you're just like, what the fuck are you doing? I'm counting on you! <laughs> Sorry, I'm being, I'm being terrible. I'm being terrible. Monica! I don't know why I did that. Please ignore my weirdness. Monica! Hi, Chris! Having a good time so far? No. I'm being surrounded by weird people. It's not generally a good... Yeah. Monica. Good. Glad to hear it. By the way, since you're new and everything, if you ever have any suggestions for the club, like new activities or things that we can do better, I'm always listening. Don't be afraid to bring things up, OK? All right, then. Of course I'll be afraid to bring things up, because, 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 why, why would I want to be doing that? I'm much better off going... Ugh. My eyes are watering now, Jesus. What is going on? What is going on? I hope none of you catch that virus that I've recently had because seriously, it is, it is one of the worst ones I've ever had. It's really bad. I mean, of course, there are a lot worse viruses than flu in the world. I'm just saying, from my own personal experience, it's the worst one I've had. And, and yeah, it's been pretty bad. I'm much better off just going going with the flow until I'm more settled in. Monica. Anyway. Want to shave home with me? Mmm. Kind of embarrassing, but I guess I have to. Oh, no! Don't do the pose! We've had this discussion, Monica, about the pose. Don't do the pose! It's weird. You look like someone who's odd. Don't worry, Chris. I am worried because you're doing that. That's, that's, why, that's why I'm worried. We're all a little bit embarrassed today, you know. <laughs> I'm more worried about this this ponty stature you've got going on there. Monica, but it's that sort of barrier that we'll learn to get past. Is it really? Chris, yeah, that's true. I hand Monica my poem. Mmm. I like this one. It makes me think of something Sayori would like. Really? Is that so? That's a bit of a strange thing to say, isn't it? Monica, you and Sayori are really good friends, right? I wouldn't be surprised if you had those sorts of things in common. She says this, but the face expression says that she is not happy with that. That's concerning, because she's one of the ones I said I think is going to do something weird later. Chris, ah, oh, well... Maybe we're good friends. We may be good friends, but Sayori and I are actually really different. Monica, hmm. Well, that may be the case, but maybe there are also some similarities you wouldn't expect. The way she talks about you, I don't want to know. I don't want to know. It sounds like the two of you are really, really, blah, the two of you really care about each other, each other's well-being. Even if you show it in different ways, it ends up being more similar than you'd think, really. That's very insightful of you. Now stop talking. So I think that's the kind of vibe I get when I re when reading your poem. I said, stop doing that, didn't I? Talking, that talking thing. Hmm. You sure you're not reading too much into it? Oh my God, the pose. Ah, I could be. 
Oh gosh, I sound like Yuri. But in any case, Sayori's writing has kind of a gentle feel to it. I can tell that she likes exploring with emotions like happiness and sadness. Yeah, about that. I think there's an underlying issue there. But I think it's probably going to happen at some point soon. Who knew that someone could be so happy would enjoy sad things too? Maybe because she's not as happy as she lets on. I think the game is offering more clues at this point. This is a this is a clue into Sayori's character, which I've already picked up on in the previous episode. Chris, yeah, that's totally unexpected. Well, each to their own. Monica, and you shouldn't be afraid to experiment a little either. Chris, I'm sure I'll end up trying different things a lot. It could take a while before I feel comfortable doing this. Monica, that's okay. I'd love to see you try new things. That's the best way to find the kind of style that suits you. Everyone else might be a little biased towards their own kinds of styles. But I'll always help you find what suits you the most. Not sure how I feel about these words that are coming out of her mouth right now. So don't force yourself to write the way everyone else wants you to write. It's not like you have to worry about impressing them or anything. That sounds like... Uh, I'm, I'm getting... How do I put this? I'm getting kind of... Uh, I don't really want to use the word jealousy. She's, she's trying to be manipulative here. This is manipulative. It's not like you have to worry about impressing them or anything. She's trying to uh, create suggestion in my mind in her own favour. That's what I get from that. Now, you might wonder why I'm coming to such assumptions. I have had training in psychology and I recognise this way of talking. Got my eye on you, Monica. Ha ha! Ha ha! Monica, anyway, do you mean, want to read my poem now? Monica, don't worry, I'm not very good. Chris, you sound pretty confident for someone who claims to be not very good. Monica, well, I'll ask because I have to sound confident. That doesn't mean I always feel that way, you know? Why are you telling me that? Are you trying to now, are you now trying to show vulnerability? Because that's another manipulative tactic that people use. I have to be very, very confident, but I'm not. Like me what she's doing basically Chris I see well let's read it then hole in the wall now I'm just going to say because Monica is one of the ones that I've got suspicions about I'm going to pick this poem I'm going to pick this poem apart and see if I can find anything obvious hole in the wall it couldn't have been me see the direction that's Spark is that sparkle? Oh, I hate it when I can't read writing. See, see the direction the sparkle protrudes. I think it says sparkle. A noisy neighbour, an angry boyfriend. I'll never know. I wasn't home. I peer inside for a clue. No, I can't see a real, a real blind, like a film left out in the sun. But it's not too late. My retinas. Already scorched with a permanent copy of the of the meaningless image. It's just a little hole. It wasn't too bright. It was too deep. Stretching forever into everything. A hole of infinite choices. I realise now that I wasn't looking in. I was looking out. And he on the other side was looking in. Okay. Okay, so... This bit is particularly... in This last part here is particularly interesting because... She's suggesting that a... Not, not just in general, but a he, an actual individual male person, is looking in from the outside. Is this going to take a character has developed sentience vibe 
as she's kind of like realizing that she's looking out of the fake world into the real one. Hold that thought because that may be true. Monica, so what do you think? It's very free for, if that's what you'd like to call it. Sorry, I'm not really the right person to ask for feedback. Monica, ha ha, it's okay. That kind of style has gotten pretty popular nowadays. That is, a lot of poems have been putting emphasis on the timing between words and lines. When performed out loud, it can be really powerful. So, right, what was the inspiration behind this one? Ah, well, I'm not sure how if I know how to put it. I guess you could say I have a, I've had a kind of a epiphany recently. Okay, I, I have to say again, I'm getting a vibe here that it's it's indicating a char this character has become sentient and is realising that the world she's in isn't real. But at the same time, the poem, the wording in the poem backs that up. But also, there was manipulative wording in her dialogue prior to reading the poem. So I'm I'm very suspicious about Monica. This could be leading on to the, the horror aspect of the game in a very subtle way. It's been influencing my poems a bit. Chris, an epiphany? Monica, yeah, something like that. I'm kind of nervous to talk about deep stuff like that because it's kind of coming on strongly. Maybe after everyone is better friends with each other. Anyway, here's Monica's writing tip of the day. Sometimes when you're writing a poem or a story or your brain gets too fixated on a specific point. If you try so hard to make it perfect, then you'll never make any progress. Just force yourself to get something down on paper and tidy it up later. Another way to think about it is this. If you keep your pen in the same spot for too long, you'll just get a big dark puddle of ink. So just move your hand and go with the flow. That's my advice for today. Thanks for listening. Right, good. Phew. I guess that's everyone. I glance around the room. That was a little more stressful than I anticipated. It's as if everyone is judging me for my mediocre writing abilities. Even if they're just being nice, there's no way that, no way my poems could stand up to theirs. This is a literature club after all. I sigh. I guess that's the, that's what I ended up getting myself into. Across the room, Sayori and Monica are happily chatting. My eyes land on Yuri and Nizuki. They gingerly exchange sheets of paper showing their respective poems. As they read in tandem, I watch the, each of their expressions change. Natsuki's eyebrows furrow in frustra- Oh dear. In frustration. Oh no. I sense, a f I sense an argument approaching. Meanwhile, Yuri smiles sadly. Natsuki, what's with this language? Yuri, eh? Um, did you say something? Natsuki, oh, it's nothing. Natsuki dismissively returns the poem to the, to the desk with one hand. Nasuki, I guess you could say it's fancy. Yuri, uh, thanks. Yours is cute. Nasuki, cute? Did you completely miss the symbolism or something? It's clearly about the feeling of giving up. Nasuki, how can that be cute? Yuri, I know that. I just meant the language, I guess. I was trying to say something nice. Arr! You mean you have to try that hard to come up with something nice to say? Thanks, but it really didn't come out that way at all. Yuri, uh, well, I do have a couple of suggestions. Nasuki, huh. If I was looking for suggestions, I would have asked somebody who actually liked it, which people did, by the way. So you already liked it. Chris did too. So based on that, I'll gladly give you some suggestions of my own. First of all, Yuri, excuse me, I appreciate the offer, but I've spent a long time establishing my writing style. I don't expect it to change anytime soon, unless, of course, I come across something particularly inspiring, which I haven't yet. <coughs> and Chris liked my poem too, you know. He even told me he was pretty impressed by why have I become the subject of their argument? I don't, I don't like that. Nazuki suddenly stands up. Oh, shit. Oh, I didn't realise you were so invested in trying to impress our new member, Yuri. Yuri, uh, that's not what I said. Uh, you're just... Yuri, stand up as well. 
Maybe you're just jealous that Chris appreciates my advice more than he appreciates yours. Stop using me as a centrepiece for your argument, you little strange people. I don't like it. No, I do not. Masuki, huh? And how do you know he didn't appreciate my advice more? Who cares? Masuki, are you that full of yourself? Yuri, I know that if I was full of myself, I would deliberately go out of my way to make everything I, everything I do look overly cutesy. Nasuki. <laughs> Sayori. Um, is everyone okay? Nasuki. Well, you know what? I wasn't the one whose beep beeps magically grew a size bigger as soon as Chris started showing up. Yuri. Nasuki. Monica. Um, Nasuki, that's a little... This doesn't involve you, they both say to Monica. Sayori. I don't like fighting, guys. Suddenly, both girls turned towards me as if they just noticed that I was standing there. Chris, Yuri says, she's just trying to make me look bad. Azuki, that's not true. She started it. If she could get over herself and learn to appreciate that simple writing is more effective, then this wouldn't have happened in the first place. Azuki, what's the point in making your poems all convoluted for no reason? It wasn't that convoluted. The reading should jump out at the reader, not force them to have to figure it out. Yeah, that's what they call writing for less intelligent people. No offence to anyone who has that problem, but, you know, that's just true. The meaning should jump out at the reading here, we read that. Nasuki, help me explain that to her, Chris. Yuri, wait, there's a reason why we have so many ex deep and expressive words in our language. It's the only way to convey complex feelings. The meaning of the of of the most efficient effect <laughs> My words just fell apart. It's the only way to convey complex feelings and meaning the the most effectively. There we go. Apparently I can't read all of a sudden. Yuri, avoiding them is not only unnecessarily limiting yourself, it's also a waste. Yuri. You understand that, right, Chris? Chris, uh, They're both like, well? How did I get dragged into this in the first place? I don't know, I was asking that about ten minutes ago. It's not like I know anything about writing, but whoever I agree with, they'll probably think more highly of me. Uh, well, the problem is... Nozuki's attitude did actually start it. She just got annoyed because she didn't understand the complex writing, which and then she took it out on, on Yuri. But at the same time, no, I don't think Yuri did anything wrong there. I think that was all that was uh, Natsuki that, that provoked that situation. Oh fuck! I clicked the wrong one. How do, how do I? Can you go back? I clicked the wrong one. Yui. I'm just going to have to go with it because I accidentally clicked the wrong one. You're really talented. Uh, well, but Nazuki has a point. I think that... I racked my brain and attempted to back myself up. I think that conveying feelings with, with, with few words can be just as impressive as well. It lets the reader ima reader's imagination take over. And Nazuki's poem did a really good job of that. Nazuki, yeah! I didn't actually agree with her, but unfortunately I clicked the wrong one. Natsuki, I did. It did, didn't it? Aha! Show Miles how much you know. Wait, stop being a nasty piece of shit work. Yuri, that's not Natsuki. I think that's enough. Natsuki, ha? Huh? Me? She was mean to me. Natsuki's voice whines. Chris, look, what we talked about yesterday was right. Writing is a really personal thing, and sharing it can definitely be hard. It looks like we learned that today. Even small criticism can lead to something pretty heated. I glance over my shoulder. Sayori is nodding vigorously. Yeah, so you don't need to feel threatened. You're a great writer, Hazuki. Mizuki's voice gets caught in surprise. Mizuki, thanks for noticing. She finally mutters that, barely audible. Chris, Yuri. Hmm? Yuri looks at me dejectedly. Oh, 
nothing worse than a dejected look, is there? No. With a face like that, I can't help but feel bad for her as well. Chris, I'm not sure that Azuki didn't mean everything she said. So you don't need to feel threatened either. Yuri, well, if you say so. Azuki, hey! It's not like you need to apologise for me. Sheesh! You need to go and sit down and take a breather, young lady. We'll be hanging out that window before you know it. Nozuki takes a breath. I, the thing about... Uh, Nozuki glances around the room. Would everyone stop staring at me? Unsurprisingly, Nozuki has a harder time with it than she boasted. So Yuri and Monica look away. Nozuki, huh. Anyway, the thing about your beat beats is I, I didn't mean it, okay? That's all. Nasuki looks away, avoiding eye contact with everyone, with anyone. Sayori, yeah, you're naturally beautiful, Yuri, Sayori says. Chris, Sayori, what are you doing? Yuri, eh, I'll go make some tea. She ran away really quickly. Sayori, uh, I was just trying to help. Yeah, don't do that, we've had that discussion. I'm sure she appreciates it, Sayori. Now go away and be a, a silly person somewhere else. I pat Sayori on the shoulder because she's a patable person. She's a patable person. Monica, well now that we're past that, everyone read each other's poems, right? Read each other's poems, right? I hope that it was worthwhile for everyone, especially you, Chris. Stop with the pose and the, 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 the obvious flirts. Don't do it. Don't do it. I'm, not, I, I'm on to you. I know what you're up to. Or at least I partially know what you're up to. And to be honest, it's a nice change of pace from lazing around where you got a little too used to. Monica, ha 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 ha. Chris, ah, so my joining the club was a reasonable, was, was reason, we, I'm having word problems today, it seems. Ah, so my joining the club was reasonable for ruining the atmosphere, was it? Yeah. Monica, no, not at all, not at all. There's still time before we go home, so we'll relax for a bit. Of course, besides chatting, we do literature-related things in the club room. So maybe you could take the chance to pick up a book or do some writing. After all, that's what the club is for. Sayori, I disagree, Monica. Monica, uh, what about? Sayori, that's not the most important thing about the literature club. The most important thing is having fun. Oh my god. Monica, of course. Well, I guess that's why you're the vice president, Sayori. Sayori, ha ha ha! In the end, though, Monica's right. Being in the literature club probably means I, can sp I can't spend all my time doing nothing. But in the end, I guess it's been worth it so far, apart from that enormous argument that just took place for no apparent reason, and it made me feel really weird about everything. <laughs> yes, it did. <laughs> okay, everyone. It's just about time for us to leave. How did you all feel about sharing poems? Well, I sort of thought that was obvious. They didn't seem very happy about it, did they? So, Yuri, it was a lot of fun. Yuri, well, I'd say it was worth it. Suzuki, it was all right, well, mostly. Mm, duckling, duck girl. Monica, Chris, how about you? Yeah, I'd say the same. Maybe, maybe a bit, even though I didn't. What? It was a neat thing to talk about with everyone. Awesome. In that case, we'll do the same thing tomorrow. Oh, no. And maybe you learn something from your friends too. So your poems will turn out even better. Me. Eh. I think to myself, I did learn a little more about the kinds of poems everyone likes. With any luck, that means I can at least do a better job impressing those I want to impress. I don't want to impress any of them. I'm just anticipating the horrible horror bit that comes later that we haven't found yet. I nod to myself with a newfound determination. Sayori, Chris, ready to walk home? Sure, let's go. Ha ha ha. Sayori beams a smile. It truly has been a while since Sayori and I have spent this much time together. I can't really say that I'm not enjoying it either. Right, so I'm just going to say... Um, just to sum up so far, this 
just a reminder that the game is what it appears to be is a horror in disguise and it will come out eventually that it's a horror um, I have I just want to summarize what I picked up on so far so Sayori Sayori comes across as someone who puts on a very uh, bouncy smiley outside image that's her demeanor but her nature is more of a more of a depressive I would say um, that could be leading up to something so that warning at the beginning of the game will probably play into that so just to let you guys know what might be coming might be coming up uh, I'm getting very weird vibes from Monica she wasn't present on the poem page with the chibis and she her poem indicated a form of sentience outside of that of the other characters uh, even possibly indicating that she was looking out of her digital world at someone looking in and playing the game. Um, so they're the two things I've noticed so far. So my, I've got big suspicions on both Monica and Sayori right now. Chris, Sayori! About what happened earlier, Sayori. Uh, what do you mean, Chris? You know, between Yuri and Mizuki. Chris, does that sound... Does that kind of thing happen often? Sayori, no, no, no. That's really the first time I've seen them fight like that. I promise they're both wonderful people. You don't you don't hate them, do you? Chris, no, I don't hate them. I just wanted your opinion. I can see why they, they'd make good friends with you. Sayori, phew. You know, Chris... It's nice to get the... It's nice that I get to spend time with you in the club. But I think seeing you get along with everyone else is what makes me the happiest. And I think everyone really likes you too. Yes, that's... <laughs> Sayori says. Sounds like Woody Woodpecker on the left side. Sayori, every day is going to be so much fun! Chris, eh. Looks like Sayori still hasn't caught on to the kind of situation I'm in. Sure, being friends with everyone is nice, but doesn't really need to stop there. I don't think that... I want it to go any further than that personally because things are going to happen that are bad. Chris, we'll just have to see what the future holds. Sayori, I pat her on the shoulder again because she's a very patable person. I've decided she's a very patable person. I said that more to myself than to her because it's easy to use Sayori as an internal monologue sometimes. Sayori, okay! Yeah, let's do this. Oh, is it poem time again? Where is Monica? Why is she not there? Right. Okay, let's see. What kind of vibe do I want to create? Landscape. Incongruent. I like long words, you know. I like long words. Whisper. Ugh. Graveyard. What I'm looking for is the ones that are a bit odd. So, so far they're consistent with Yuri's character. Although Whisper was a bit weird for Natsuki. I didn't really see that being a Natsuki word. Uh, scars. Oh, that's Sayori. That's worrying again. Daydream, that's Sayori. Imagination, that's Yuri. Ah, oh, excitement, that's uh. Right, I'm gonna put I'm gonna put this to the test, okay? This word didn't come up last time. Anxiety. I guarantee you that word is going to be Sayori. Oh no, it wasn't. I'm surprised. But, I mean, Yuri is quite anxious. I'll give her that. Disorientated. Suicide. Oh, that's Yuri. Okay, fine. Not quite what I was expecting there. Despise. Yeah. Rain cloud. Oh, look, that's, that's our dear Sayori, that is. Extraordinary. Oh, that's also Sayori. Heaven sent. 
variance. Entropy. Uh, the words have disappeared. Ah, oh, they're back. Uh, dark. They so, already, that's interesting. Marshmallow! Oh, that's that one. Childhood. Why is that so you're reading? That's weird. Another day passes and it's time for the club meeting already. Okay, everyone, I think that's just about all I've got time for for this episode. So we've learned a few more things, but the horror aspect of the game has not yet manifested, although there are hints and there are clues. So we shall, we shall look forward to those. Thank you all so much for watching if you're enjoying this series so far. And it is a... Sorry. If you're enjoying this... Sorry, my, I'm, still, I'm still not very well. Um, if you're enjoying this series so far, let me know down in the comments and hit the like button so I know that you are, because I don't know otherwise, you see. And if I don't know, then I can't think of things better if you. And if you're not, then don't, because that would be very silly. As all, and, it, and, and if you have any uh, predictions on where this is going to go, please please do elaborate in the comments. Although, if you've played the game before, no spoilers in the comments, please. But if you're genuinely just trying to guess where things might go, then feel free to drop a comment. And, as always, I will see you next time. Farewell!